All right, guys. Y'all know what time it is. I read something today that said next Thursday, or beginning this Thursday, we won't go more than seven days without an NFL football game until February 10th, 2020. So you know what that means. It's time for fantasy football, baby. Got a number of uh, announcements to make to start the beginning of the year. Announcement number one. No kickers. Now, some of y'all might be happy about this. Some of y'all might not be happy about this. But it's not only no kickers, and Micah, I'm not adding punters. Instead of a kicker, which I view as not really a strategic decision. Now, if you're like me, you pick a kicker who is on a decent offense, but not too good because you don't want him to score too many touchdowns. And then your kicker ends up getting you anywhere between 4 points and 13 points. You know, it's boring. Most people just trade out kickers like nothing. So to add a little bit more of a strategic decision making, we're going to add a, a new flex position. So we'll have quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, two flex positions. I'm going to keep in the defensive player for now and a team defense. And that's it. Like it? Hope so. Update number two is fairly quick. It's just simple change to IDPs. So sacks used to be worth one point. I wanted to double that to uh, give a little more importance to edge rushers, considering how important they are to real football. I feel like they should be equally valuable in fantasy. <clears throat> and I wanted to boost the scoring for IDPs, making them a little more strategic. So sacks are worth two instead of one, and passes defense we used to be worth half, which is the same as a tackle, although tackles happen on every play. Pass defenses I don't think are nearly as valued as they should be, so I changed pass defense from half to one. For those who don't know, FAB, or Free Agent Acquisition Budget, is a different way of claiming waivers. So, the previous way of reversing the standings, so if you suck, you get better waiver claims, is no longer the norm. Instead, you bid on players similar to an auction. It's a blind bid, so if, like a couple years ago, Tariq Cohen, after week one, explodes and you want to bid on him, it goes to the highest bidder at the end of the deadline. You can still pick up free agents, so you're not screwed if you run out of your budget, which is $100. Um, but the first round of waivers, rather than being set in reverse order of standings, you have to bid on a player. So if you bid 5 bucks, somebody else bids 6 they get them. And you don't figure it out until the time comes. You get a $100 budget that goes through the entire season, so... Use it wisely because if you run out in the first couple weeks, you're only on free agents from then on. I think it adds a little more strategy than the socialist way of reverse order of standings. All right, this next one has a little math involved, so go with me here. Previously, we used to do a very simple payout of 220 to the winner and 20 to second place. But I want to change it up a little bit, paying out a little bit more for uh, for consolation type things for people <clears throat> like myself who had an awesome season but got absolute jack shit to show for it. So what it's going to be from now on is 150 to the winner, still a decent payout, 40 for second, so doubling that for, for being good enough, 10 if you win the third place game, keep those people interested, and then... $20 to the highest score of the regular season. On top of that, a little more math, it's going to be $2 per week to the highest score of the week in the regular season only, not in the playoffs. And then to keep the losers, also like myself, more interested down the road, it's going to be a $4 payout, not much, but maybe enough to keep you interested, to the winner of the consolation ladder. All that should add up to 240 If it doesn't, let me know. And the news you all wanted to know mostly, the draft. 
So, same as always, we're gonna do auction draft. Um, except I want to I want to have it in my place. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, I'm not in my 450 square foot apartment. Uh, I bought a house and I want to use it for partying. So, uh, Saturday, August 24th uh, is the date of the draft, and the time is TBD, depending on how many people can make it, um, but I would like to have a little, let's not call it pre-game, but we could have a little get-together, a little cookout, a little barbecue sesh um, beforehand in the noonish range, and then towards the later afternoon, 5, 6 o'clock or so, have the actual draft. That's what I have in mind. Um, Obviously, that's a little flexible depending on who can come, but we can uh, figure it would be a good way for us to get together, have a little fun, and uh, we'd probably also save a ton of money not having to uh, have a $50 tab on, on wings and beer at beat ups. So um, let me know if you can make it. I'll reach out to you guys after this video as well, but uh, that's the plan for now. Oh, yeah, that's it. Sorry, forgot to sign off. Uh, I'm looking forward to another season. I hope you are too. I'm very, very excited. I feel like uh, I'm going to carry over some, some really positive momentum from last year and, and continue to kick some ass. So, don't let Brian draft Todd Gurley. That's my final ask of the league. All right. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one.